Here I am back in the Jeep talking about another battery technology that I find interesting. It's called a, a vanadium flow battery or, or a vanadium redox battery. There's two different names it's known by. And basically it's a battery technology based off of liquid instead of solid conductors like in traditional anodes and cathodes we find in the batteries that we are used to dealing with today. And uh, redox, I had to look it up because I want to show what it meant. Uh, redox just basically means it's a process in which a substance or molecule is reduced and another is oxidized and in that process you get a uh, an electron transfer which you know generates electricity so in these batteries instead of using the chemical compounds and all of that stuff they're using basically an electrolyte solution again they can they, they, they can exist in different states of charge now, I'm not going to get into the super technical aspects of that a little bit beyond beyond the scope of the video, but I'll put you know some links in the description so you can read about it all you like. But the benefits of these batteries again are they're fully containerized, they're non-flammable, they're compact considering the amount of uh, of charge that they can store, and they're reusable over a large an infinite amount of, of recharge and discharge cycles. And they discharge 100% of the stored energy when called upon. And they also have very slow degradation and they're easy, easy to maintain. Uh, these batteries are more, are more suited towards uh, commercial or large utility scale projects. This is not something that you're going to have at your house like the salt water batteries was I talked about before. This is not something that you're going to, you know, have in your car. So you know, it's not going to be what's going to be used to power, you know, uh, electric vehicles. But it's definitely something that, that, that can help what we have issues with with our, our renewable energy sources right now is storing the energy that's generated when we don't need it so we can use it later. So that, that is a good thing. Those, that, those are technologies and things that we definitely, definitely need to continue to develop. Um, the way the battery works is basically you have two fluid, two fluid tanks one acting as a traditional uh, anode and the other one acting as a, as a cathode and this fluid is is pumped into a reaction chamber where the two fluids are not allowed to physically mix there's a membrane between them but the membrane allows the fluids to transfer electrons to and from depending on if you're charging or discharging the battery and that was what produces the DC current and then you have an inverter converts it from DC to AC. Uh, that's a real basic description of how this works. Uh, like I said, link in the description if you want to really re read about the, the nuts and bolts about how this technology works. And uh, they're really scalable. Basically, if you want a bigger battery, you just have bigger tanks. You don't have to, you don't have to build a whole nother battery setup. You just need bigger fluid tanks because the fluid is what's holding this electrolyte solution in in either its positive or negative charge state to have the ability to run past each other to generate the current. So the more you need, the bigger fluid tanks you need, and they're they're environmentally safe. Now, a little caveat to that is a uh, uh, recently there was a there was a somewhat of a breakthrough that was discovered on how to make these a little more um, temperature friendly, which I mean by that is, is they're real sensitive to temperature change. They're kind of a kind of a narrow with the temperatures that they operated at before they would start having, you know, not being functioning properly. And a university discovered if you added hydrochloric acid into the solution, that not only do you increase the effectiveness of a battery, but it also makes it a little more, a little easier for a wider range of of temperatures that they can operate in. Now I know hydrochloric acid right away. People, oh man, there's you know environment hydrochloric acid, blah blah blah, whatever. But think about this: every time you jump into a public swimming pool, you're basically swimming in a really you know, watered down hydrochloric solution, just for your information in case you didn't know that. Anyway, but I understand the issue with the acid, I get it. But hydrochloric acid can be dealt with fairly easily, it can be neutralized fairly easily, we know how to do it, it's used in large industrial 
you know, operations as is. We know how to deal with it already. So, in my opinion, that's not that big of a, of a problem. That's not a deal breaker. But back to this battery. These utility scaled batteries are what we can pair with solar, wind, hydro generation to store this energy until we actually need it instead of it just being instead of just hey turn the wind generator off we don't need the power right now it's just going to be spinning for no reason now we can store the electricity with these style of batteries anyway it was something that i found fairly fascinating fascinating about and i'm really interested in battery technology to me uh i've always had this opinion of if it seems like battery technology was just stagnant it's like there was it, it seemed to me that there was not a lot of a lot of uh breakthroughs and in, in, in energy storage battery technology just seemed really stagnant to me and, and that's why i kind of read about them a lot because i really want to find out what's going on or maybe there's things out there we just don't hear about anyway vanadium flow battery flow battery or re vanadium redox battery or v flow battery i think it's a good idea i hope that they're continue developed and made even more efficient and cost effective because it's definitely something that we can definitely use in our everyday lives in the future to store renewable energy. I'm the Mad Minister and that's my opinion.